Um, so I'm gonna just personally like I wanted to draw um for myself doing this podcast my favorite part has always been the fan interaction so I wanted to draw from our fan submitted questions for kind of the rest of it get my stuff out of the way um so one of the questions we got was from actually our friend Axel uh so he asked how has it been involved in a game series with such a passionate fan base have you interacted with the fans much and if so how many bonker theories have they bothered you about (laughs) and do you think (laughs) Do you think it's possible, or would you like to voice a different Zelda in another game in the future? Ooh, good question. It's funny, a lot of people thought I was going to be in Smash Brothers, but I didn't say it because obviously I can't say anything either way, but I was like, yeah, people were like, you're going to be in Smash Brothers, and then somebody put it up online that I was, and I was like, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be in this game. No, they went with a different different version of Zelda for Smash, so... They did, they did. Um, With that said, I mean, when it comes to would I like to play a different Zelda or um, really any any character for Nintendo? This is just, it's one of those things like, some people ask like, what else would you like to play? I'm like, a Korok. I would love to play a Korok. I'd love to play <laughs> a, a tree, which in this case would be a really amazing tree. Um, <laughs> I, I would of course do any of those things. That would be an honor and a privilege and had, has already been such an honor and a privilege. I take it while I can, I take it while it's there. And I accept what I've been given with a huge amount of appreciation. And that's really the only way you can go about these things. <laughs> but of course, if I was ever asked to do anything else for Nintendo on any level, of course I would do that. Smallest role, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, just to work for the company, is a, it's a huge honor. Oh, right on. And then about... Oh, oh, oh yes. Sex about the fan base as well. <laughs> that happened more at the beginning, I think, at, in panels and stuff at different conventions. Um, now people don't bother with me me with theories too much um i can't really answer them anyway and i think that the timeline is quite like that was a big one was like where does breath of the wild fall on the timeline oh yeah and i think didn't um alnuma didn't he answer that question i I believe well he just gave a very vague answer yeah like it doesn't (laughs) fall on the timeline well it's after (laughs) this one game which what that game is like in the very middle of the timeline and so someone just asked is it before or after i just said after yeah, and that was it. But, uh, I think so, they they intentionally wanted to be vague to leave it yeah. up to uh, well, yeah. the player's imagination. Yeah, we all I have our own. Ten thousand theories, years later, but right. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's kind of a question, like timeline wise, that kind of probably is more our <laughs> our field of <laughs> stuff, right? But um, okay, yeah. So next, Miss um, Click, who's actually watching live as well, so she submitted a question yesterday. Uh, so she says, for Patricia, first off, I have to say I fell in love with your methodology for finding the voice of Zelda. I saw oh, an interview you. where you said you wanted to portray the voice of a young girl who had to grow up under stress and responsibilities, and old soul, if you will. Thank you for bringing her maturity, justice. I respect you so much for it. The question is, if you could find one trait within Zelda that most resides within you, what would that be? Ooh, one. Um, I feel like my answer would change day to day because I feel like she's such a full-blooded person. Um, and I think there are many, many similarities. Uh, I, I do put an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of pressure on myself. I, this is a thing. Um, <laughs> so I think I, we all I, do in a way. Right. <laughs> and she is so relatable mm. f- for that reason. Um, so I would say that would that is one thing, but I think another thing that is a really big recurring theme in my life that is very important to what makes me click is my love of nature. And I grew up in a very small town. I grew up in the woods. I grew up next to Lake Superior. I grew up kissing mm-hmm. frogs. Um, and I, I I feel like that part of her out in the fields roaming around and um, and studying nature in an attempt to answer bigger questions that is something that I relate to very deeply. That's, that's great. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Click. Thank you, Ms. Click. That's really lovely. Uh, she had a part <laughs> two to her, to her question as well, but I figured I would, I would just start with that one. Um, for her part two, <clears throat> she also asked, for the emotional crying scenes in the rain with Link, did you have other versions of crying in different takes? I personally mm-hmm. resonated with the soft, heartbroken cry that you yeah. gave in the published version but did they have you record different levels of crying? For example, the Japanese version is completely opposite and mm-hmm. a very hysterical type cry. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, I put that down to two different aesthetics, um, two different, slightly different cultural versions of how to go about that kind of scene and what the expectations are in the West and the East about what that's going to sound like. And um, so, yeah, there were, there were different versions of that cry, but in general, I was told to keep it more muted, like more soft, because that was what they ultimately wanted. And, and they were pretty okay. sp specific about that. And there was something about the strength of her character and when she is so fatigued that she finally gives into this crying, mm -hmm. that it was like that that was for them the most heartbreaking kind of cry that they, that's what they liked. Yeah. Oh. And I'm, I'm going to ask just one more question before I pass this off to Ilya here, because <laughs> she's been so patient. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is, comes from uh, his username's gamer bud. He asks, uh, "There is a mod. This is a mod that's made by fans actually, where they, they hacked the game, made some changes uh, for Breath of the Wild that allows you to play as Zelda. If you were given the chance to revoice her or voice her to be a main playable character in the future, what direction would you like to take Zelda, and how would you like her to play with Link?" Would mm -hmm. Zelda take the role of Link and rescue him from the main villain? Would she fight alongside Link? Maybe like a co-op sort of game or standalone Zelda story with no Link, etc. Although I don't think mm. you would be the, necessarily the creative uh, decision That's true. that yeah. point. But you know, <laughs> if, in, in Dream World, if you could have it your way. <laughs> I was always so um, hesitant to, to answer those questions this year because I'm like, oh, dude, I, I don't know. Um, at this point, I really love the Hyrule Warriors direction. Um, I I think it would be fun to see her play a whole game where maybe Link was like knocked out and or asleep and <laughs> <He> couldn't <laughs> wake up. <laughs> and she couldn't wake him up. So she no no, not that you can't even do that. But but um but yeah, something where she played through the whole game where it was just uh, uh, a given that she was gonna be fighting and doing all the things. And I, I don't really think that that's so far off. I mean I think that's very feasible. And the mod actually was was really beautiful. I saw that mod and I was like, wow, people are amazing. Yeah, yeah they did a really <laughs> good job with that one, actually. Just making, because I know her model in the game, her proportions are very a little bit different than Link's. So getting her to work in that uh, in that mod was actually a very impressive feat. I'm, I'm not a programmer, so. <laughs> I'm not either, yeah. but I've watched a lot of characters be built up from motion capture mm. skeletons, and I know that sometimes, yeah, that's that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, well, I'll, I'll hand you off to Ilya now. Well, <laughs> first, uh, <laughs> Cruffy in the, in the chat says she looks just like her, and there's a lot of other people that's... that said this as well, that you oh. actually resemble Zelda in the game a lot. You do. That's so crazy. Well, which I never could have. I mean, thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Like, I appreciate that because she's awesome looking. I will mm -hmm. say, I don't know if you've met, like, Elizabeth Maxwell or Bosa, who has red hair. Oh, does she? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in fact, we've joked about this before, and the directors joked about it too, that all the characters have a kind of the essence of who they're playing. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've, oh, uh, that is so cool. we've actually reached out to uh, a lot of the champions and around the same time that we reached out to you, and we have mm -hmm. like half of the champions who have agreed to come on, but we're still waiting cool. to hear back from some of the others. So we're hoping to like get interviews with everyone, if that's possible. Well, you know, possible. most of us are going to be in... Salt Lake City for Gaming Con. I don't know if that makes any difference, but we're all going to be in one place at one time in a couple of weeks, July oh. 6th through 8th. Um, anyway, I can pass on a <laughs> word. If, if not a podcast, we can pass on a word. We might be busy all right. Well, that would be appreciated. But now, Ilya, <laughs> you can take us out on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, as Daniel mentioned earlier, um, he has a theater background, and I just graduated in May with my BA in theater. Congratulations. So, thank you. So obviously, when I was told you'd be on the podcast, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> um, so this is kind of more of a nerdy theater-esque question. Um, I, I mean, you said you've done also like movies and television and theater, and I've noticed in my limited experience um, getting into character is usually, for me at least, you know, I have like my set of interview questions for myself to get into character or like wearing the costume and the hair and the makeup is makes it that much easier to get into character because you already look like your character and you can just 
go on stage and you're that character. But for voice acting, I imagine it's a lot different because you're not wearing Zelda's costume. And, you know, and like you said, you're having to match the lip flaps and the dubbing, which makes it 10 times more difficult. Um, so I wanted to ask, like, what was your process for getting into that voice? Um, some people can just step into it. I know they're just like, all right, now I'm doing this character, which I completely envy. It takes me like an hour <laughs> to get into character for theater. So, or maybe I'm just a snob, but yeah, what was your process? <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Um, so I, I have a few different answers for that question. Um, first of all, in terms of getting into character for theater, one of the things that I think is important about theater and that makes theater special and different from all the other things is exactly what you're talking about. Um, the fact that you have a ritual around both the warm up process, the performance process and the cool down process. And mm -hmm. when you start to do characters that are emotionally heightened or like when you have to start sustaining those for a long period of time over like a professional run where you simply have to do it and there's like no like whether you're sick you have to perform whether you're you know theater is my first love theater is where all my stuff comes from so um i i feel like i could talk about theater for ages and i won't but um <laughs> i think the prep is both the, is different but it's the same for all the different forms and for voice acting, oftentimes I'll go and do a gig where there is no real prep involved except for warming up your instrument and just sort of getting your imagination going and doing the things that you learn in mm -hmm. theater school, like the warm up exercises, maybe breathing on the floor, um, just so you don't like blow out your vocal cords or, uh, you know, and, and then you, that you remember that you have like your whole range to draw from because sometimes you'll go into a room when you're doing a voice and that's something that you don't get in theater yeah you, yeah you sort you go in there and they're like okay um we have five characters for me, for you to do um can you do and this one is 12 and this one is uh 80 and this one is you know maybe around 20 or and this one's like 28 and this one's 26 and you're like oh, you know <laughs> how am i supposed to differentiate <laughs> those two voices um but you you are often asked to do that sort of thing in voice work so prepping to know that you could go into a room and do that is different from doing a piece of theater where you run your lines out and in your head and you make sure your body is really, really warm all the way through to like release out in this direction to a stage and like pitch that way, you know, I don't know. Uh, God, I totally got lost. What was the question again? I totally got lost. I mean, that kind of answers it. I was just like, <laughs> what was your process for getting into Zelda's voice? <laughs> for Zelda's voice. So Zelda was an interesting hybrid of like, I did need to do prep for that because first of all, there was a British accent, um, yeah. which I used, I used sound files and coaching from a British friend who I went to school with in London, who happened to be an actor in LA. Um, and I would go through the lines and sort of, uh, it took me about like two hours of prep before the session. So I'd be warming up my voice, remembering what I'd done last time, going through old files that I'd done at home like working up into the voice and sort of figuring out where it's at and where the intention might lie. And then with the lines that I did have in advance, because they're not always in advance, but I did have most of them a bit in advance for this one, really getting to know them as well as possible, trying to memorize them to be a little bit off book. Mm. Um, sometimes you need to be fully off book, sometimes not so much. For these, being off book was important because you want to be able to focus on watching the lip flaps and not the words at the same time. Yeah. So that was actually like, yeah, in the morning, I would, I would do hours over the weekend if I knew I was recording on a Sunday. And then two hours in the morning before going in of just like warming up my voice, finding the register, practicing the accent, going back over the lines and just sitting in the space for as long as possible, drinking the right tea, going to like, I, I would be very ritualistic for this one. Whereas other voice work, I wouldn't necessarily. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And that actually kind of leads me into another question I have, and I think someone else had in the chat, I don't know who it was, um, about the British accent. I've done a couple accents before, and I stink at accents. I mean, unless it's my natural southern drawl, I stink at accents. I did Russian once. It was not fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, you might want to recast this to my director. Um, but uh, So this is kind of a two-parted question, although you kind of answer it because I was going to ask like how did you get into it <laughs> two hours of prepping yes <laughs> um mm. 
um, whose choice was it uh, to use the British mm. accent? Like, mm. was that, did you want to do it? Was it someone saying, mm, let's lean this way? Was it just, let's experiment? And they decided on it. So, yeah. In the breakdown of the audition, it said UK based voices as a possibility for mm. this character. And so I went in with that to the audition and okay. I, without even knowing what it was, I went in um, and I prepped with my British friend for the first audition, like several hours before the first audition. <laughs> so um, again, like I didn't, I didn't know that that was the direction that they were going to go or with the other voices. And I think for them, the fantasy world had all the different accents in it. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't have, I, I did an RP British, which is like kind of the most, so like an educated and you can't say neutral because there's no such thing as like a neutral British, but it's like mm -hmm. an educated posh British, not too, too posh. Some, some lines. Yes. But I kind of kept it really straightforward. If you were asking me to do like a Cockney or like a North London accent or mm -hmm. something like that, I probably wouldn't have tried it because I don't feel comfortable enough um, improvising in that accent. And I do avoid accents that I feel are like really, like I'm not going to go out and like whip out a Danish accent or something like that. <laughs> the only reason I felt comfortable doing it honestly was because I'd studied in London for a year and then I'd done it on stage a couple of times with like extensive vocal coaching <laughs> by the time I got to this. And even then it's hard. It is hard to do accents, uh, even with all the coaching that you can possibly get. You know, if you didn't grow up with it, it's always going to be a more technical experience than doing your natural accent. And you're yeah. always riding that line of like hearing it and f being able to feel it, you know? Yeah. But I would say it, the best advice, if you want to have a couple of, I would say get good at a couple of accents because you can't do everything. But yeah. if there are, if there's some that you have a propensity for, I would say focus on those and get some training in them. Get, um, I don't know if you've got like the IPA, like if you've worked with like phonetic, like where you like do all the things for bit, it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen to it. Um, get yourself recording it, listen to it back a bunch of times and then like work on those and then have them in your back pocket so that they just need refreshers when you pull them out versus I need to learn this whole new accent. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> accent work is hard. Accent work is always hard. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, we've had you on for about 35. I know we originally agreed on 30, but do you have time for two more questions? Uh, Ilya, let's, let's you do can, it. I'm here. All right, you let's can ask uh, your final question, and then I want to end with the okay. Breath of the Wild question. Um, well, funny enough, that actually was that last answer was perfect because I was like, I have two questions left, and how am I going to get both? And one of them was like, free advice. And I was like, yes, I just got it. Because. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I just graduated, so I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, where, so you graduated from where, did you say? From somewhere up north. Elia Rose isn't my real name, so I don't actually have. Oh, I was wondering where Elia, Elia came secret. from. It's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she, she likes to keep stuff private on the internet, so. Good Whereas move. I don't oh, care. I imagine I'm just if like... I ever got to do voice <laughs> acting, it'd be like, well, <laughs> here I am. But um, I graduated from somewhere up north. It was a really tiny private college that I was really worried it was going to have a crappy theater program. But then it ended up having an amazing theater program. And I was like, because mm. you had to learn everything. You didn't just act. You had to learn backstage and everything. So it was well-rounded. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, for my final question, and this is probably a difficult question because I have a hard time picking favorites on things. But um, of all the memory sequences that you had to record, what would you say, or or I can include DLC in this too, everything you had to record, what would you say was your favorite scene to record? Well, that's actually pretty, I've actually gotten that question a lot this year, but it, but for me, it's, um, it's a toss up between two and they're like very much so um, the, the frog scene. <laughs> uh, oh just yeah. Because it was a several parts. It was fun. It was a really fun, they're all fun to record, but like that one, again, I really relate to, I really like frogs. <laughs> I really do. And uh, I was like, yeah, I totally dig this. I, I love seeing her in a light moment as well, where she's just like totally mm -hmm. in her element. Um, and then the other one was, um, cause I won't give spoilers per se, but the, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say like the, the part where she accesses her powers mm. and it all sort of, she feels like it comes comes together there uh and it's like kind of a both a surprise but uh you know what i mean like that was a yeah 
it was just a really special moment in the room because there was already um, a soundtrack to what we were recording. There was already, there was a lot, of, a lot of the elements of the visuals were in place. And it was kind of a sacred moment for everybody who's like working on the game too. Like you just get those like really like zoned in moments and everybody's just like really focused. And that was one of those moments. It was, uh, it was very emotional to do that one. It was really, really cool. Yeah. Oh, I get chills thinking about that scene, actually. What's, what's funny <laughs> is those are actually like some of my favorite scenes in the game, too. Just uh, <laughs> like you said, that the frog scene, there's that moment of levity where um, the rest of the game is there's a lot of it's really tense for a lot of it. And this Zelda's under a lot of pressure as a character. So that moment of levity where she's kind of, um, you know, feeling like herself and able to joke around and <laughs> Try and yeah. get Link to eat a frog. Yeah, uh, she turns tomorrow. into a little nerd. Yeah, She's exactly. like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that moment because I felt like that was where that's kind of how I act most of the time in my daily life. So, <laughs> um, and then the, yeah, the the other scene there's that big dramatic beat where there's that shift of her realizing her powers, but then also this dramatic moment with Link kind of um, being set up for the game as as it were again to avoid spoilers even though it's been out for a year but i think most of our fans have played it but they have but uh, some haven't still. still i still remember yeah. the people who haven't even picked it up yeah um, so i mean it oh. should but <laughs> i'm biased of course if you couldn't tell from um, I, yes <laughs> my I little... Little, your little link plush there in the back <laughs> yeah i got him from at e3 actually there was a little oh, booth, like, amazing. way tucked in the back like behind everything i almost missed it but <laughs> oh i'm broken yeah. hearted i didn't make it to e3 this year i can't oh, it was, it. It was like, we had a great time but yeah i think uh, <laughs> jesse you had one more question oh yeah so um i actually had two but i don't think you would be able to answer one uh and that question was for Breath of the Wild, uh, because in movies there's a lot of scenes that are recorded that are deleted and not used. Were there any scenes that you recorded audio for that either weren't used or was scrapped altogether? Um, mm -hmm. So was there anything like that that were, can you say? I probably, or? even if, I, I probably shouldn't just in case like that becomes, like I should always just, I don't think so, honestly. But I, but I, if there was something that I did remember, I, I wouldn't say. Okay. Well, uh, that's that's their <laughs> material. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> right. Well, my final question uh, is, and this is, I guess, one that the Zelda fans would like to know. Um, so, Breath of the Wild has, like, within a year, year and a half, has already become like the highest selling Zelda game to ever be released so if they were to make a direct sequel like uh, with Ocarina of Time they made Majora's Mask Wind Waker had Phantom Hourglass so if they were to make a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild and they had you come back would you prefer that or would you prefer them if they did bring you back for an entirely new Zelda game where you got to play a completely different iteration of Zelda so which would you prefer oh. Because Breath of the Wild, it kind of ends on a note where, like, they say something odd is happening, and then there's the cutscene where they go off to explore, and it ends, and it kind of leaves it up to your imagination. So if there was a part two that started right there, would you like that, or several years later, or would you prefer to voice a brand new Zelda? Uh, so, I mean, that's a, that's a, that is a really great question. Um, it's hard for me to answer that question because I feel like if either of those things happened, it would be a whole new kind of, you know, dream come true moment where you get to kind of extend this world further than what it has already brought for you. Um, I mean, I would love to go back in and re um, revisit the Breath of the Wild world and, and continue to grow because the more you do it, the more it grows and it would evolve. And it would be like doing a new character weirdly too. It would it would feel very new, I'm sure, because it would have been several years later. Yeah, and this Zelda wouldn't be trapped the entire time. Right, right. <laughs> um, in terms of a new Zelda, um, gosh, I mean that's just that's just up to Nintendo. It's very like they. I wouldn't be surprised if they went a totally different direction with a different Zelda who was a different age and a different aesthetic. That's like you know, it's not like Mario where he's like omnipresent across all games where and languages you know <laughs> um it's it's a different thing it's really a character driven thing so 
maybe they would and maybe they wouldn't. I mean, like, I hope they would, but like, I, I also just appreciate that I've been part of the, part of the um, canon. <laughs> oh, ah, any of those things would be amazing. That's what, that's my. <laughs> All right. Well, to uh, end the interview, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. Yes. Thanks for having me. And if anyone wanted to check out some of the other stuff that you are currently working on, where could they find that? <laughs> Well, I'm on my socials. That's where I'll be announcing stuff when it comes up. Um, I was just recording. I, I do have an album that will be coming up probably in the fall, um, which is a while. Because <laughs> we're not going to release it until it is really ready. Um, I just shot on a couple of TV episodes, which will be out in the summer. Ah! Come, come visit me on social media. That's really the only thing, like, <laughs> when things come up. All right, so your Twitter, your Facebook page, yeah. stuff like that. All right, uh, with all that, uh, thanks everyone who tuned in to watch, and thank you again for joining. My absolute pleasure, and uh, good luck to Ilya. Break legs. <laughs> thank with, you. <laughs> with all the things that are coming your way, and I know that many things will come, and uh, if I had any advice to give you as an actor, I would say be say yes to everything do be careful what you put online if it's like if you think it's crap if it's like um sorry that sounds really <laughs> suddenly but like if, if you have like a like a, a visual demo that's not up to par um professional material is always better mm -hmm. don't listen people will will try and tell you that there are all sorts of ways to do things and sometimes they work and sometimes they're not for you you just got to follow your gut through it and it's uh, it takes a while it just takes a while it's it's a lot like this <laughs> so you have to find a way to make yourself be like that yeah. <laughs> and that's up to you that's up to you this career is insane but yes, it's it uh but the adventures adventures await you i'm sure so thank you yes yeah. all right uh <laughs> i guess with all of that uh bye everybody mm -hmm. thank bye. you again for bye. watching thank you so much Ciao. Lovely talking to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey everyone, it's me again, Elia Rose. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And you know what? If you're a fan of videos like this, you should totally subscribe and give this video a like and comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more. <laughs>